Hi everyone, today I'd like to show you a workflow that will take data from a CSV into Graphics R and write it to a Neo4j database. Along the way, we'll add some simple analytics and set the database up for keyword search in Graphics R. This workflow is especially useful for someone like myself who doesn't come from a data science or engineering background and who's Technical capabilities are pretty limited when it comes to bringing data into a database. And this is just a really easy way of doing that. Um, it's not ideal for really large data sets, but you'll see if this is a data set of around uh, 25,000 nodes, I think, and I'm able to do it pretty quickly. So first, let's look at our data set. This is a CSV I got from Kaggle showing album art from heavy metal albums. So we've got in the first column the artist name, next the country they're from, whether they're still together or not, they've broken up, um, the specific genres of heavy metal that they're associated with, the album name, and then finally the image URL which takes you to the cover art for each album. Now, let's remodel this tabular data as a graph. We'll actually start out in Neo4j Desktop and create an empty database that we'll load our data into. So we'll start out by creating a name for the project and for the database and entering a password. So give it a minute to actually create the database. Once it's created, we'll need to start it, which will take another minute or so. Next, we'll fire up GraphXR. If this is your first time using GraphXR, you'll need to go over to the Graph App Gallery and install GraphXR as a Graph App. Next, you'll be prompted whether or not to trust GraphXR since the certificate comes from outside of Neo4j. You can go ahead and say yes, and you can launch GraphXR from the dropdown next to the open button. You'll also be prompted to install the APOC plugin from Neo4j, and now GraphXR will launch. If you haven't already created an account, you can go ahead and do so now. GraphXR is free for personal use, and once you've got your account set up, you can log in. When you first enter GraphXR, you'll be confronted with a blank screen. At this point, no data has been loaded. We'll open the Query panel, go to the CSV tab, and click the Load CSV button. So will allow us to upload the CSV. Next, we'll click New. This will take us to the CSV Mapping Editor, which is where we'll be doing the bulk of our work. The Mapping Editor allows us to assign or map the columns of a table to the categories, relationships, and properties in a graph. Each row of a table corresponds to a single node or edge. I want categories for albums, artists, genres, and countries. When we open the mapping editor, there will already be a starter category. So let's turn the starter category into artist. I'll add the two columns, artist name and artist status, as properties. I'm also going to give the properties a little shorter name. This is purely optional, but I find it aids readability. And I'm going to set the artist name or name property as a key. And what this does is ensures that for each unique value of that property, there's only going to be a single node. So if I had, say, a thousand artists from the UK and I left as key unchecked, I'd get a thousand UK nodes, one for each artist. If I check it, I'll only get a single UK node with all of those artists connected to it. Next, I'll create an album category and a relationship connecting it to my artist node, and I'll rename that relationship Album by Artist. For album, I'll want the album name and cover URL as properties. I'm going to rename them as well, and I'll set the album name as a key. Next comes my country category, and I'll connect the artist to their country of origin. And again, I'll want to make the country name a key. The final category I'll create is for genre. And this one's a little bit more interesting because you'll notice that I have two columns in my table 
artist main genre and artist alt genre. I feel like that level of granularity is going to overcomplicate things. So I'll start out approaching this the same way as with my other categories. I'll create genre and then my relationship artist plays genre. So this is the interesting part. I'm actually going to create that genre category and the artist plays genre relationship twice. Next, in one of my genre categories, I'll take my artist alt genre, rename it to genre, and set it as a key. Then, in the other genre category, I'm going to take my artist main genre, rename it to genre, and set it as a key. So essentially what I'm telling it is whether the data is coming from the artist alt genre column or the artist main genre column to treat it in the same way. Put it into a property called genre, and if you have repeated values, to only generate one node for that value. So now I've got my mapping set up. It should give me a, a schema with four categories, artist, album, country, and genre, and three relationship types, album by artist, artist from country, and artist play genre. So we'll give it a name, save this mapping, and in our CSV tab, we'll click apply. Now this part can take a minute, depending on the speed of your computer. I'm just gonna do that trick from cooking shows where they pull something out of the oven that they already made, and ta-da, you've got a graph. And we're actually right in the center of the graph in 3D space, so let's click the fly out button for a more comfortable perspective. And now at this point, I could write my graph to Neo4j and call it a day. But before I do that, I'd actually like to just add some simple analytics. I want to figure out how many albums each artist has put out and how many albums total have come from each country. To do that, I'll open my transform panel and go to the aggregate tab. There are a number of transforms. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. But what aggregate allows me to do is pull data from the surrounding nodes. So if I want to see how many albums an artist has created, I've already got my artist category selected as my aggregate to category. I'll pick the album by artist as the aggregate along relationship, set the mode to property from connected edges, choose count as my formula, give the new property a name, albums by artist, and click run. So what this is doing is for each artist node, counting up the number of album by artist edges connected to it and creating an album by artist property on my artist category with that value. Now, if I want to know how many albums come from each country, I can aggregate to the country category along the artist from country edge using my property from neighbor nodes and do a sum of that album by artist property. And so that's adding together all of the album by artists across all of the artists from each country. Once I've conducted those transforms, I'm ready to write this graph to Neo4j. I'll go to my Project Panel, Data tab, click Save to Neo4j, and remember before when we were setting properties to keys in the Mapping Editor, I'll do the same thing here in the Save to Neo4j panel, save the unique properties as keys. We'll click Save to Neo4j, give it a minute, and voila! We have populated our Neo4j database. Our very last step is to make that database searchable by keyword. Click the cog by the keyword search bar to enter the search index configuration window. Click Refresh Property to get all of our properties to show up. And then put a check mark next to all of the properties you want to be searchable. For these, I use the same properties that I made keywords before. Click Submit Index Task. With that out of the way, we've covered all the bases that we set out to achieve in this tutorial. We've modeled the CSV as a graph, we've added some simple analytics, and we've written the whole thing to Neo4j database and made it searchable in GraphXR. So in a future video, I'll show you some visual analysis that you can perform in GraphXR with this data. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you, and happy graphing.